Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Jesus, he never fails. Jesus, he never fails. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Jesus, he never fails. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus never fails. I have tried him and he never failed. I have tried him and he never failed. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus never fails. Jesus never failed. Jesus never failed. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus never failed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We certainly give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. I often say that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I'm sure that you probably feel the same, that it's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to have a mind to come to God's house, to be in his presence. For the Bible tells us that in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness thereof. Amen. And blessings forevermore. And we certainly do thank God for his blessings, his multitude of tender mercies and his blessings. And we thank God for everything that he puts in his house. There's mercy in the house of the Lord. There's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. There's grace and there's peace in God's house. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, I'm reminded of uh, what uh, uh, mother, sister, uh, Carrie Marsh often says is that, uh, he quotes that scripture of that for people to come unto Jesus he said, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And she often said, if you're having a hard time in, ho in holiness, you got the wrong yoke. Amen. It should not be a struggle in the sense of, of living holy, being holy, and walking with God. And if, if there's a turmoil going on, there's a struggle going on, um, and you're headed toward the wrong yoke. Because the Bible says, the Bible says that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, let us remember that uh, a lot of people are struggling in their walk with God. There are a lot of people are struggling in their faith. A lot of people are struggling uh, being obedient to the word of God, being obedient to leadership, amen, to being obedient to leadership. The Bible says, obey them that have the rule over thee whose faith follow. So when you commit yourself to a church, when you commit yourself to the Lord, you're committing yourself to authority. And it's good to have a covering, amen? It's good to have a covering. It's good to have a covering. That's the way the Lord has established it. The head of uh, the, the woman is the man. The head of the man is Christ. The head of Christ is God. So there's a covering on all bases. Amen. And it's good to submit to your covering. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, we want to certainly remember uh, backsliders, remember those that uh, need the Holy Ghost, need healing and deliverance in their spirit, soul, and body, and even in their mind. Uh, you'd be surprised. I'm sure uh, you've lived in life and you've been in touch with life for a while. But, you know, you never know what a person is dealing with mentally. You never know what a person has gone through in their life. Amen? Uh, there's a reason why people uh, act the way they do. And sometimes they act the way they do based upon uh, life experiences. And not all life experiences are pleasant and good. There's some evil things that happen to people which causes them uh, to have and to respond to conditions and situations the way they do. So let us pray one for another, amen? Let us pray one for another and that we would have, as the Bible calls it, compassion upon one another. 
And that's basically seeing your brother or sister in need and reaching out and to help them. God wants us to help each other. Amen. The more we realize that we are helpers one of another, the, be the better off we would be. And then let us pray uh, for our unity. And that unity doesn't necessarily mean that we agree on all things, that nobody agrees on all things at all times, but unity deals with purpose, that we all agree on a certain purpose, a certain cause. The reason why those people were able to build the Tower of Babel uh, all the way to heaven, because they all agreed on that one purpose, and that's what we would do. And the Lord saw what they were doing and said, uh-uh, we got to go down and confound them because they would achieve their goal. They would accomplish their goal because they were, uh, were like-minded in one purpose. And when we come to the body of Christ, when we deal with the church, we should all uh, be in like-mindedness about the vision and the purpose of the church. We should all be like-minded about the word of God and applying God's word in our life. We should all be like-minded about serving Christ and the way of salvation and, and the doctrines of Jesus Christ. We should all be like-minded concerning that. Although we come from different walks of life, though, although we may have different opinions, but we should all be of one mind when it comes to the service of the Lord. So let us pray one for another. Let us pray for each other that we may grow in grace. The God, God wants us to grow in grace, which is a process, a process of growing, amen, in grace. So let us uh, root ourselves and ground ourselves in the Lord so that we would be able to receive the proper nutrients uh, uh, to grow. A lot of people don't receive the proper nutrients in their growth process and they wither, they wither, they wither and die. So let us pray one for another. Let us pray also too for um, uh, people in all walks of life. Pray um, that, uh, for our nation, pray for the world. Uh, any other prayer requests? Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Amen. So we certainly will. We'll pray for you and your body that the Lord will send forth his healing. All right. Let every heart pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you for the anointing and the Holy Ghost. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul that is under the sound of my voice. We ask you, Lord, that you bless those that are looking upon us even virtually. We ask you, Lord, to look on Sister Jackie, touch her body, touch her stomach. Lord, restore and renew her appetite, Lord, in our digestive system in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you bless each and every soul and each and every family member. Remember each and every unspoken request. Lord, we know that you are able. We know that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Lord, we know that you are true. We know that you are honest and precious. Hallelujah. In our sight. And Lord, we ask with full assurance of faith that you hear our requests, that you will hearken unto us, that you will move and bind every evil spirit and every demonic power that is coming up against us. Lord, we pray that you bless us to put on this whole armor of God, that we might be able to stand and withstand the attacks of the enemy. And Lord, we pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you take charge of this Bible class on tonight. Open up our understanding, send forth wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The fear of the Lord, quick understanding of the fear of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, send forth counsel and might. 
Hallelujah. Let those spirits rest with us and rule with us even on this hour. Grant a ready anointing. Grant a rhema word, Lord. Hallelujah. Grant quick revelation in the name of Jesus. And Lord, you know that we come in, hallelujah, with our own ideas and our own thoughts. And we have our own questions, Lord. We pray that you answer our questions in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, you are able. That Hallelujah, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Pray for our door of utterance in Jesus' name. Heal the few sick among us. Hallelujah, let your word have its free course. Let us leave this place rejuvenated and revived. Hallelujah, Lord, we repent of any evil that we have done in any word, thought, deed that we have committed that's against your will. Uh, let the blood of Jesus, let it cover us right now. Let the blood of Jesus sanctify us right now. Let the blood of Jesus heal us right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Hey, glory, we give you glory, honor. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord, and count the angels about us. In the name of Jesus, rebuke death, rebuke the devourer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, the scriptures say, saints, don't stop praying, uh, for the Lord is nigh. Saints, don't stop praying, he'll hear your cry. For the Lord has promised, and the Lord is true. Uh, he'll hear your prayers, and he'll answer you. As we want you to turn with us, um, as we're dealing uh, with the armor of God, um, we want to, uh, you to go with us to the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter number six. Chapter number six, Ephesians, chapter number six. And uh, Paul, Paul says to us in the directive, we actually on Ephesians chapter number 6 and we're going to start out with verse 15 but uh, Paul talks about uh, the, the, the preparation of the gospel of peace the preparation of the gospel of peace having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace but before he says that he gives a directive he gives us a directive which represents an order. He gives us an order. And in that order, he tells us to be strong. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He gives us that direction because uh, of what the Lord has promised us. Uh, if anybody uh, is a student of the word of God, you realize that God has literally given you great and precious promises. And these great and precious promises, uh, he said, by these, they can add to you peace and grace and mercy. And these uh, great and precious promises, they also give you access to God's inheritance. God has given you these things. And, and, and because God has given you these things, the enemy, uh, he wages war against us to stop us from achieving and attaining the promises that God has for us. So therefore, Paul says, uh, uh, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. That's the directive. Be strong in the Lord and be mighty in his power. When it says, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, it means for you to be mighty in his power. Be mighty in the power of God. And that's what God expects us to be. He expects us not to run around like as weaklings and run around uh, 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 being susceptible to the enemy and to uh, whatever he can do to us, being bullied by him. We have to be mighty in God's power. And uh, the scriptures, I don't want to get too deep into it because I want to move to the gospel but he deals with us, he says, the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal, and not carnals, not worldly, but mighty through God. There's that word again, mighty through God. And that word mighty means it's powerful, amen? And that's why Paul is encouraging us through this directive to tap into God's powerful weapons. 
uh, mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. So he says, uh, be strong in the Lord. Be strong and mighty in the Lord. Not in your own might. Not in your own power. But in the might and the power of the Lord. And, and that's the directive because of what God has for us. If you're going to attain what God has for you, though he left you a promise, you have to take it by force. Uh, though God has left you uh, some great and precious promises, if you want to attain unto anything, you got to go ahead and take it by force. The enemy just ain't going to let you have it. You got to take it. Amen. Uh, like the children of Israel, God uh, gave them the land of Canaan. They had to go and take it. Amen. They had to go there and fight for it. God has given you blessings and, and you have an adversary, the devil, who's there to try to stop you from attaining your blessing. So you have to, if you want to get it, you got to go after it. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Amen. There's violence out there. The devil wants to take you out, kill, steal, and destroy you. And, but if you want to attain what God has for you, you've got to be prepared to fight. Amen. You've got to go after it. If you're not going to fight, he's going to overrun you, overtake you, and you'll never advance in God's kingdom. Never. Amen. You won't do it. So that's why you got to have this mindset and realize that you're in a battle 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It never stops. It never stops. You got to have that mind. Amen. Hallelujah. So we see here, then that's the directive. So Paul says, uh, uh, how do we achieve the directive? He says, for us to achieve the directive, we must put on the whole armor of God. Amen. In order to, to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, in order to achieve and attain the promises that God has given unto us, which leads to that inheritance. Amen. We've got to put on the armor of God, which is equipping yourself with the word of God. Amen. You can't be a lazy saint. You can't, you can't, you can't not read your Bible and be strong in the Lord. You can't not just read it, and, but you got to meditate on it uh, day and night. If you're going to be strong in God, you got to read your Bible and meditate it or meditate on it day and night with, to the fact wherein you become rooted and grounded in it. I'm going to tell you something, that God literally wants his word to become your thoughts. Uh, he literally wants his word to become your thoughts. And, and, and how you think is how you're going to act. How you think is, going, is, is how you're going to respond to everything. So God literally wants you to uh, uh, think like him. Uh, uh, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Amen. So in order to attain that mind, you have to study Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to study the word of God. You may not like study. Uh, and, and I believe it's in the book of Job. It tells you that study is the weariness of the flesh. Thank you, Lord. But, but you got to get it in. You got to study that word. Amen. Uh, uh, so he says, put on the whole armor of God that ye might uh, be able to to stand against the wiles of the devil so that you might be able to stand against the schemes or the plots of the devil. The devil is always out. He's plotting to get you. Amen. And, and there's some schemes that he puts out there. He puts, he puts things in your mind. He puts things in other people's minds uh, to come at you. Uh, he puts things and set things up on a governmental level to come at you. Uh, he puts your neighbor at odds with you. He put people in your whole own household at odds with you. He put you at odds with you. Uh, <laughs> so you, you, you got to be uh, aware of these schemes and of these plots and how he operates. Uh, 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 I heard a sermon one time 
Very powerful sermon. Dissatisfaction brings about a change. Uh, but but if you don't if you don't if you become dissatisfied and offended with the Lord, you'll you'll back up on him. That's a that's another plot of the enemy. Uh, if you don't uh, 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 let your mind uh, be in tune with Christ, you'll, then your mind is 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 in the opposite place. And if you're not uh, focused in on Jesus. 24 hours a day and seven days a week, you given space and room to the devil. Amen? So some people may say, well, that's fanatical. Uh, it's not fanatical. Uh, because if you uh, uh, get distracted, that's when the enemy can slip in. Uh, and he, if he slips in, it can cost you. Uh, I mean, see the Holy Ghost saying, tell him the truth. It will cost you. <laughs> not it could, it will. It'll cost you something. Thank you, Lord. So, so Paul says, uh, let me move on. Uh, put on the whole armor of God. You got to put on God's whole armor. And that armor is truth. Uh, that armor is righteousness. That armor is the gospel. That armor is faith. That armor is salvation. That armor is the word. Amen. And, and when it talks about it being the word, it's not just talking about the Bible inclusive as being the word, but it's talking about the word as a defense mechanism against the devil. Amen. You got to have some scriptures in the time of war uh, to come against. If the enemy is attacking your faith, you've got to know you some scriptures to help you to build up your faith. Is the enemy is attacking you in your evil desire area? You got to know you some more scriptures to overcome the enemy in your evil, uh, 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 to overcome his his temptation in your in dealing with your lustful desires. Amen. If you're greedy uh, and you 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 fighting greed, you got to have some scriptures to combat greed that is that that is tempting you. You understand what I'm saying? So that's what it means by uh, 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 the sword of the spirit. That kind of word. You got to know. You got to know yourself. <laughs> you got to know your temptations. Don't fool yourself. Don't don't think that you somebody uh, when you uh, somewhere in God when you when you're not even in the in the game. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Thank you, Lord. Don't think yourself something when you ain't all that. Uh, and, and realize that you need God's help. Uh, Paul says, having obtained mercy, uh, I continue unto this day. And you got to realize that, that I need the word of God in my life. And I'm going to humble myself beneath the mighty hand of God so that he can exalt me. So that he can encourage me. So that he can strengthen me. Amen. So uh, those, 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 those five uh, pieces of armor, I'm going to say it like that. Uh, uh, truth, righteousness, and, and the gospel, he, he describes them as garments. Amen. He describes them as clothing. So basically what he's saying there is that you should have truth, righteousness, and the gospel in you and on you at all times. In other words, uh, as you uh, 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 walking around in this in this in this world. Uh, hopefully, you ain't never walking around here naked. Amen. Not naked. Why? Because you got clothes on. You got garments on. And that's what he's how he's describing truth. You should always be operating in truth. Uh, if you're fighting or not fighting uh, the enemy, you should always be operating in truth. Hallelujah. I feel my help coming up in here. Uh, you should always be operating in, the, in righteousness. You should always be doing right things. Uh, uh, you should always be doing what's right according to the word of God. Uh, and you should always be standing on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, for in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. So those next uh, three uh, weapons are, are, are what you use when you are being attacked by the enemy. When you hear the battle cry and there's, an, uh, and there's a war going on, you pick up your shield of faith. Amen? You put on 
uh, 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 your helmet of salvation because you're about to fight now and you pick up your sword. You follow me? So, so you use those weapons when you're about to get it on. Amen. When you're about to wrestle with the devil, when you're about to fight. Amen. So he tells you those first three are, are garments that you have to have on at all times. You have to walk in truth at all times. You have to live in righteousness at all times. And you have to be grounded in the gospel at all times. And when you engage in warfare, uh, uh, in the evil day, Paul describes it, uh, you pick up the shield of faith, amen, to quench all of his fiery darts. You know when the fight intensifies. You know when the battle is on. Uh, and then you, you, you put on your helmet of salvation to keep your mind delivered uh, at all times. And then you take that sword of the spirit because you're getting ready to cut back some stuff. You're getting ready to, you're getting ready to kill some stuff. You're getting ready to, to, to defend some stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. You're ready, getting ready to go on the offensive to take uh, uh, back what the enemy is trying to steal, kill, and destroy from you in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, having said that then, um, let's look at uh, uh, Ephesians uh, chapter number six and verse 15. It says, uh, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So, so he's saying now as a garment, uh, he's saying, have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. If I were to ask uh, any of you here, what's the definition of the gospel? Uh, the majority of you would say it's the good news of Jesus Christ. And I would say you're absolutely right. But you know, people stop right there because they don't really get into what is that good news uh, of Jesus. What's the good news uh, concerning Jesus? And Isaiah asked the question in Isaiah chapter 53. He says, who hath believed our report? To whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? And what he was referring to, who hath believed the scriptures huh, concerning Jesus? He's the arm of the Lord. And the good news is everything in the scriptures that is written about Jesus. Amen? It's everything that's written about Jesus. That's the good news, because oh my God, hallelujah, because, because you've got to understand everything that is written about Jesus, everything. And if we were to uh, go over to the uh, book of, the book of uh, St. Luke, uh, chapter number four, and uh, drop down to uh, verse 18. Verse 18, and this tells you uh, some things about Jesus. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. Now, Jesus is anointed. Now, he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Jesus, he, he's, he's anointed and he literally is the gospel. And he preaches the gospel. Notice, he preaches the gospel to the poor. Those that see themselves in need. Only ones that are going to benefit from the gospel of Jesus Christ is those that see themselves in need of it. Amen? Not just because the gospel is for everybody. The good news is for everybody. But only those that desire it. Only those that want it. Only those that see themselves in need will benefit from it. You got to see yourself in need. Amen. Notice, to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. That's good news, ain't it? Uh, that's what that good news talks about. That Jesus is sent to us 
to heal our broken hearts. <laughs> a lot of us got some broken hearts, don't we? Oh, look, I got, I, I, I'm healed now, but, but, but you know, some stuff come upon me. My heart may be broken again, huh? but, but the Lord will heal. He'll heal your broken heart. Don't mean how, how many times your heart get broke. Huh? Jesus will heal your broken heart. Isn't that good news? Huh? Notice, he has sent me to preach deliverance to the captives. Now, people, uh, before they come to Jesus, they held in captivity. Am I right? Huh? And, and, and Jesus, the good news is, he's able to take you out of captivity. But, but what's also more important, that sometimes when a person is walking with the Lord, you all mean if it's a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 40, 50 years. If you're not careful, you can go back into captivity. Amen. Just because he set you free doesn't mean that you're free uh, all way and all times. Why? Because you can give in to the temptation of the devil. Huh? But good news is if you're bound captive, you still got one that's able to set you free. No matter, now you could be like the prodigal son. Hallelujah. He, he, he took what his father had, spent all that he had, went into captivity. But the Bible says he came to himself. Amen. Jesus can help you. That's good news, ain't it? To come to yourself and realize, hey, my daddy is rich. Uh, uh, why, why am I eating like I'm eating? I can go back to my father and I can be one of his hired servants. I can humble myself. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so, so with Jesus, we all have captivity deliverance at all times. Amen. You can, I'm going to say this. You, you can be in captivity uh, uh, for five or ten minutes. Thank you, Lord. Like you making a bad decision, enter into captivity. Jesus come and free you. You ain't got to be in captivity uh, all day long or 10 or 20 years. huh? But uh, the, the moment you make up your mind that you're going to turn back to Christ, he can set you free. And who the son is set free. The Bible says it's free indeed. Huh? That's good news, ain't it? Hallelujah, because sometimes the enemy will get an advantage over us. But we've got to realize that we've got a helper. we got to realize that we got a very present help huh, in the time of trouble. Now notice then, thank you Jesus, he, he, he heals the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captive, recovering of sight to the blind. Sometimes you get blind, blinded, amen? The enemy blinds you, doesn't it? Hallelujah. And, and Jesus is able to open your blinded eyes. That's, that's the anointing that's upon him. That's good news, ain't it? Huh? Thank you, Lord. And then he can set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And what that means is liberty. That means it represents the year of jubilee, wherein uh, you set free, but also your debt is cleared and everything that, that you went into debt for and with is restored unto you. What does that mean? That, that when you hook up with Jesus, everything that the enemy stole, uh, first of all, Jesus can declare your debt and then restore everything that the enemy has, has taken from you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's, that's what this gospel is about. Amen. That's what the good news is about. Uh, so, so when you think of good news, you got to think about why Jesus is anointed. Uh, you got to think about what's the mission and purpose of Jesus. Uh, all of you, when you think about this good news, and you got to have that in your mind. Amen. Because this scripture here, what I just read to you, it relates to warfare. Don't the, don't don't your enemy want to take you captive? Huh? Don't he want to bind you up? Doesn't he want to take everything that you own? Huh? Doesn't he want to uh, 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 destroy you mentally? Huh? And, just, and take away everything you own physically? Thank you, Lord. That's, that's why we got to realize that Jesus is anointed. And, and when, when we hear the gospel, 
it's liberating. When we hear the gospel, it can set you free. Amen? Y'all with me? All right, thank you, Jesus. Now, let's, let's, let's go back over to uh, the book of Ephesians. Hallelujah. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter number six. In verse 15, notice what Paul is saying. Notice what Paul is saying. We have, it, we have it in our minds, a clear understanding. Now what the gospel is. It's more than, ah, I don't want to say it like that. It is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. But you got to attach a greater understanding to it. And that greater understanding is what we read in St. Luke chapter number 4. And I believe that was verse 12, I think. About the Spirit of the Lord being upon Jesus. And he has anointed, anointed. Jesus is anointed. Means that for this cause came he into the world. He's anointed for what he does. Amen? He's equipped for what he does. Amen? So Paul says, he says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, when he says your feet, your feet shod, and you think about you wearing some shoes, your shoes uh, represents a foundation by which you can stand. The gospel of Jesus Christ is a foundation from which you can stand. Remember he says, he said uh, that you can stand against the wiles of the devil and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Amen. This gospel here gives you the ability to stand. When you know and understand the gospel and you walk in the gospel, you are able to stand. Notice what it says. Having your feet shod. That word shod there means fitted. It's fitted. And, and it's, uh, they don't do it uh, in these days as much. But in olden times, they didn't have warehouses of shoes. You went into a shoemaker and you got the, the, the shoe fitted to your foot. Amen. Uh, this gospel is, is fitted to your lifestyle so that you can have great success. You follow? It's fitted to you. It's, it's made, tailor-made for you. God has tailor-made this gospel to fit you, to fit your lifestyle so that you would have a foundation upon where to stand. Shoes protect you in all kind of weather, in all kind of conditions, in all kind of situations. This gospel protects you in all kind of conditions, in all kind of weather, huh? and, and it's used for all kind of purposes. It protects you. It gives you a foundation for where to stand. And it's fitted for you. That's what he meant by shock. It's fitted. It's made for you. Tailor-made for you. Follow? Notice then what he says. Having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Because you're going to come into face-to-face -face conduct or combat with the enemy. And, 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 and in order to do that, you need a firm uh, place to stand. You need some stability in your life. When you understand the gospel of Jesus Christ, it gives you stability in your life. The Bible says a devil-minded man is what? 
unstable in how many of his ways? All his ways. You know why that person is unstable? Because they're not trusting in, in the gospel. The gospel is not their foundation. Something else is their foundation. Which, which when you are coming up against the enemy, you won't be able to stand. You won't be able to stand. Let me say this. Hallelujah. That, that, that every time the enemy gets an advantage over any one of us is because we're not standing upon the gospel. Yes, any time that the enemy has duped you, tricked you, got one over on you, is because you weren't standing in the gospel. The gospel of truth. But every time you have defeated the enemy, you've been standing on the gospel. Every time that you have, have, have resisted him steadfast, you've been standing on the gospel. You with me? So, so, so he says, have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, when he talks about the preparation, preparation means readiness. Readiness. You prepare yourself to be ready for the fight. You follow me? Preparation is key. Your daily devotions help to prepare you. Your study of the word of God, it gets you ready. If you were going to uh, 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 run a marathon, 26 miles, you can't wake up today and say, okay, I'm going to run 26 miles. You, you won't make it. Why? Because you haven't prepared yourself. If you're going to stand up against the enemy, you've got to prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for a fight. Prepare yourself for a confrontation. So then, how do you prepare yourself? You've got to study the word of God. Specifically here, study the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news about Jesus. you got to study that. Now, now, notice what he says. That readiness then, once you're studying the word of God, that readiness deals now with your mindset. When you study the gospel of Jesus Christ, it changes your mindset. You realize uh, 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 that, that, you're, that you're in a kingdom. You realize that you got power. You realize that you got access to the throne of grace. You realize that, that, that you, 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 you have power. You have, you have an anointing upon you. You realize, you realize and you walk in that anointing, you walk in that power, but it deals with your mindset. And, and when, you, when you're rooted and grounded in the good news of Jesus, then, then you don't let everything enter in. You, you're not tempted about every and little, every little thing. You follow me? Things don't go your way, you don't give up your hope. Uh, you get frustrated, you know how to get unfrustrated. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, 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 people ain't treating you right. You realize that, hey, uh, 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 what I do, I ain't doing it for people. I'm doing it as unto the Lord. <laughs> That's the mindset. You can't, you can't function and operate looking for people to make you happy. Uh, you got you to gotta function and operate for the Lord to make you happy. You know, one of, one of my pet peeves is somebody's birthday come up and they all sad looking like Debbie Donna. What's wrong with you? Well, nobody celebrate my birthday. Huh? Celebrate your own birthday. Celebrate yourself. Huh? I love to see posts say it's my birthday and I'm celebrating me. Huh? Celebrate yourself. Huh? Don't wait for people to celebrate you. Don't look for people to make you happy. You follow me? 
And, and, and that's the preparedness. Because if you realize that, if they don't come through for you, it don't make a difference. Huh? If they don't, if they don't dot your door, huh? You ain't hold you. Oh, come on, there's somebody. You ain't, you ain't looking for a, 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 a problem or an issue. And then when you see them the next day, hey, how you doing? You ain't holding no grudges. You ain't looking cross-eyed. Huh? You ain't stressed out. Why? Because you prepared yourself. Huh? You follow me? Thank you, Jesus. And, and, and when he talking about that, that mindset, because you're focused on the good news. You're focused on Jesus. Huh? Notice, he said, I'll keep thee in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on me. A lot of people ain't got no peace. I know that's bad English, because they ain't got their mind on Jesus. Huh? If you're going you to walk in peace, live in peace, you got to have your mind on Jesus. You can't have your mind on the stock market. You can't have your mind on this or that. You got to have your mind on Jesus. He's my supply. He's my strength. And if, and if somebody break your broken heart, break your heart, huh? You got to know that Jesus is anointed to heal your broken heart. If you go into captivity, you got to know that Jesus is able to uh, deliver you out of captivity. So no matter what situation you're in, you're never lost. Because you're standing on a firm a foundation. You're standing on a solid rock. And that rock is Jesus. Now no, look, look here. So, when you realize then that, he uh, said, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, you don't go around murmuring and complaining. You get rid of that mindset. What happened to the children of Israel in the, in, 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 when they were trying to cross over to the promised land? They murmured and complained. That's what got him. When you are walking in this gospel, you don't murmur and complain. You got a mindset, trusting in the Lord. I believe on Jesus. I got a solid foundation. Amen? And, and if I stand on him, I won't be confounded, meaning that I won't be ashamed. Nobody that trusts in Jesus is ever ashamed. Follow me? Hallelujah. So, so when you're standing, you're standing upon the knowledge of Jesus. Get you a knowledge of him. He said, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Through your knowledge of him and as you walk with him, you gain experience. And through your experience, you gain revelation. You live by your revelation concerning him. And you'll never gain a revelation of him if you don't walk with him. If my mother walked with the Lord and I seen the Lord walking, working her life, that's not revelation. That's knowledge. If I walk with the Lord and I see him operate in my life, now it's revelation. I don't just hear that he will, I know that he will. And when you know that he will, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. Because then every promise that you read, you know because you've experienced him that it's true. And it changes your whole demeanor. It changes the way you operate. Don't be ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Y'all with me? Let me say this. That 
that what you need in your life is a revelation of Jesus. And when you, when you see him operating in your life, it causes you to be able to trust him more. It'll transform your life. I want y'all to catch what I'm saying. The Bible says, be not conformed, but be what? By the renewing of your mind. Notice those words that come next. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In, in the process of you proving, you, you experience and allow him to be your Lord. You, you, you do what he says. You walk on water just like Peter's when he told Peter, come, walk on this water with me. Peter stepped out, huh? walked on that water. And the only reason why he sank was because he took his eyes off Jesus. But he had a revelation. Huh? He, he had an experience. You follow me? If, 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 if uh, 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 anybody could say, are you able to walk on water? Peter raised his hand. Why? Because he know you can That's what the gospel gives to you. It gives you an open revelation of Jesus. You need that. You need that. In order to achieve that, you've got to, you've got to trust him. You've got to step out on him. Instead of, instead of uh, uh, you saying I can't, you should say I can do all things huh? through Christ. That strengthens me. Now, uh, uh, anybody can quote that, but do you believe that? And your lifestyle uh, proves that. Have you ever been around people that talk a good game? Oh my God, they talk a good game. But then, when it's time to uh, 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 put up, and and after you see what they do. You're like, ah, something missing in this equation. You, you, you misrepresented yourself. Huh? Have you ever seen things like that? Have you ever been into a contract with somebody? They say they can do A, B, and C. And then you say, okay, you my man, you my woman. Huh? And then uh, when it's said and done, you scratching your head. Say, I'll never do this again. Huh? They didn't prove themselves. Same way, you, you, if you go walk with the Lord, you've got to allow him to prove himself to you. Trust him. Amen? So, so, so when you're dealing with the word of God, now I want y'all to catch this. When you're dealing with the word of God and, and you trust him and he comes through for you, Trust him again. Believe him again. Because something else is going to come. Something else is going to come up against you. You never stop believing. You never stop trusting. And, and, and the same God that's able to deliver you back then is the same God that's able to deliver you now. He never changes. He never changes. You may get more information about your battle that'll fight your mind, but that, that doesn't change God. That doesn't change your deliverance. That's what this gospel is about. It's settled, it's fixed, it's firm, it's established. <laughs> it's tied, it's tried, and it's been tested. Y'all with me? All right. Thank you, Lord. Now, he said, I'm going to give you four things that, 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 that you do and what this gospel is about. Amen? This gospel is about you standing in the wisdom and the knowledge of God, and this gospel gives you readiness. It gives you preparedness, readiness. Readiness 
to, 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 to take advantage of the enemy. It prepares you so that you'll be able to fight against the enemy. It readies you, gives you readiness. When you study the lifestyle of Jesus and understand the gospel of Jesus Christ, it prepares you, gives you readiness. Jesus said, he said, he said, I'm, I, what I do, I do for uh, leaving you an example so that you can do what? Following my steps. The second thing that this gospel gives you is firm, uh, a firm foundation. You can put all your eggs in this basket. <laughs> you can put all your trust in Jesus. Stop looking for man to make you rich. If your desire is to be rich, huh? Follow after God's plan. Give all your stuff away. That sounds foolish to some folk. <laughs> huh? But it says more blessed to give than to what? Receive. Follow? <laughs> Y'all was getting quiet on me. Thank you, Lord. But, 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 but you got to uh, 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 stand on his foundation. That's what this gospel gives you. Jesus said this. He said, I'll show you a wise man. A wise man is one that hears these sayings of mine and doeth them. That's that foundation. You understand the revelation of Jesus and you do it. No two ways about it. The, the, the third thing it gives you, it, it causes your steps to be sure. When a soldier had uh, on these shoes, and, and those shoes, it had, it, had, it, had, it had cleats on the bottom huh? to give them a good grip. Now you need a good grip when you're going up a mountain, <laughs> when you're going up your hills, you need a good grip when you're going down your valleys. Huh? And that's what this gospel will give you. It'll give you a good grip. It'll give you what, what's called hind's feet. A hind is a gazelle. And a gazelle, they, they, they climb mountains strategically and swiftly. And that's what this gospel will give you. It'll give you, it'll give you something to grip. Huh? When you're slipping, it'll grip. Huh? When, when, when you wanna, when you wanna climb up a mountain, it'll grip. Huh? When you're going over your tests and your trials, it'll grip. You follow me? Also, too, uh, uh, those cleats are also used as weapons. When 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 them soldiers was in a battle and you fighting this joker here, this joker trying to get up off the ground, you step on him. Huh? Huh? That's what you should do. Huh? Use the gospel. <laughs> Use the gospel. Step on that devil. Huh? Put him under your feet. Follow me? I'm getting excited. <laughs> the gospel, the fourth thing, it's your protection. It protects you. It protects you. It protects you in the sense, one thing is it's a legal document. It legally justifies you before God. Because in the gospel, it deals with your forgiveness of sins. It justifies you before God. You follow me? It's your legal document that says you saved. And it also protects you because uh, 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 what it offers, it can heal you. It can deliver you. It can bring you out of captivity. It's an insurance problem. Uh, 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 
an insurance policy. You follow me? Now, let's move on. He says, and having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And, and, and dealing with that word preparation, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in there for a minute. In dealing with that word preparation, once again, we said it means readiness. You're ready in all situations because you have studied it. And you, it, 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 it prepares you for duty. You got to remember, you're a soldier in the army of the Lord. And this gospel, it prepares you for duty. Because having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. God wants you to spread his gospel. So it prepares you for duty. He wants you to know this gospel and spread it. Tell somebody about it. Now, when you're in a fight against the enemy, and you keeping your mind on Jesus by sharing this good news with others, it, it does something to your, 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 your spirit. Amen. You realize that, 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 that I'm not focusing in on how the enemy trying to kill me. I'm not focusing in on how the enemy going to try to destroy me. I know God got my back. I'm, I'm more focused on spreading this word. Telling something to somebody about Jesus. When Paul was, was going through in his life, uh, his saved life, he suffered shipwreck. He suffered battles, didn't he? He went through hard times, didn't he? He went through situations. But he says, all these things have happened unto me for the furtherance of the gospel. When, when you focus your test and trials that, that all of this is happening because of me is because I'm doing the will of God, you fall into the lines of blessed are he that is persecuted for righteousness sake. Huh? Huh? You realize that I'm being persecuted for righteousness sake and then the Bible tells you to do what? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad because great is your reward in heaven. If I perish, I perish. Huh? I'm going to see Jesus. Huh? Paul, when he asked the Lord to remove that thorn in his flesh, he prayed three times. The Lord said, my grace is sufficient. Huh? And Paul didn't have no pity party. He said, therefore, will I most gladly huh, glory in my infirmity, in my weakness. Because when I'm, when I'm weak, huh, then I'm really strong. Strong in the Lord. Notice then. When you, when you prepare Realize what this gospel does. It, it's, it, it, it's, it prepares you for duty. Then you got to realize that this gospel also is a calling. When you hear the gospel preached, that's the calling of God for you to come in for duty. It's a calling. When we understand that God has called us through the gospel and our obedience to it, then we can understand that, that, that God is working with us. I didn't make this gospel up. The Lord, he established it. Right? And he uses us to call us 
into duty. That's why he wants us to talk about it. Because it's actually appalling to call one into service with him. That's what he uses for recruitment. And the enemy knows that. That's why he don't want you to talk about it. He don't want you to talk about Jesus. Because when an individual hears the gospel, huh, it quickens them. It, it does something to their mind. And it brings them into the body of Christ. It's a calling. It's used as a calling. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Now notice. Let's go over to the book of Romans. Romans chapter number one. Let me find it. It says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. You see that word there, called? You've been called. <laughs> That's why I say make your calling and election what? Sure. And notice what Paul says. Separated unto the gospel of God. You've been called out from the world so that you can uh, 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 live by this gospel. Y'all with me? Notice what he says. Which he had promised before by his prophets and the holy scriptures concerning his son who? Jesus Christ our Lord. That's what this gospel is about. The more you know about Jesus, the more you'll be established in the gospel. So you got to study. Which is made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be what? The son of God with what? Power. <laughs> according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. That's all in the gospel. Jesus has power. And, and, and if you don't tap into that power, you won't have power. You got to tap into it. You tap into it by faith, walking in obedience, by studying the word. Notice what he says. And declare to be the son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, which is the Holy Ghost, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship. Notice, for the obedience to the faith among all nations. For his name, among whom ye are also called of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to drop down with me. Drop down to verse 18. Notice what he says. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ or the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto what? Salvation, deliverance to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and then also to the Greek. Paul says, don't be ashamed of it. Don't be afraid to talk about it. Don't be afraid to live by it. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For notice, he received a revelation. He realizes it is the power of God. If you want to have power, live the gospel. Walk in the gospel. 
Study the gospel, the life of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, and live it. Notice, he said it's the power of God unto salvation, unto deliverance, to who? Everyone that believes. Now, that word believe means uh, what the scripture says, not being a hearer of the word, but a doer. A lot of people say they believe, but they're not doing. That, that's not the definition, the biblical definition of belief. The biblical definition of belief is one who, who, who does. That's the proof of your belief. You say all day, I'm a believer in prayer. But if you don't pray, you're not a believer. You can say all day, I believe that Jesus can save. But if he's not saving you, you're not a true believer. You can say all day, I believe in giving, but never give nothing. You're not a give believer. You're lying. You're a hoarder. <laughs> you you, you, you got to be a doer of this word. You can't say you're faithful and, and fall at the drop of a hat. That ain't faithfulness. Faithfulness is being faithful. Showing up when nobody else shows up. Huh? Doing when nobody else does. Trusting at all times. That's faithfulness. Amen? And, 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 and that is, is what the establishment of the gospel is. When you realize that, that this gospel was established in faithfulness, established in righteousness, established in holiness, then you should have no problem putting all your eggs in it, trusting him, believing in him, living for him, not being ashamed of him. Amen? Why you trust him? Not being a hearer only, but a doer. That's what a believer is. A believer ain't somebody that just give a lot of lip service. Follow me? There's a lot of people that give lip service. But what God calls a believer is, is one that's a doer. You lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset you. Looking unto who? Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of your faith. That's, that's the definition of believing. If you call yourself a believer, you're saying, I'm a doer of the will of God. Amen. I keep his commandments. Amen? Now notice. Notice what it says. It says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus, of the gospel of Christ, for it is what? The power of God. If you want to have power, you got to connect to the gospel. Paul is telling you, it's the power of God. If you want to have power with God, you got to connect to the gospel. Let me say that again. If you want to have power with God, you got to connect with the gospel. You got to live it. If you're not living the gospel, you don't have power. Notice what he said. It's the power of God unto what? Salvation. Before I read you that Jesus was anointed to preach the gospel to the poor, those that are in need. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, recovering of sight to the blind, 
set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's salvation. That's the definition of salvation. Being healed. Being set free. Being delivered. Recovering. The whole package. You follow me? You ain't delivered if you're yet holding on to what the enemy uh, 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 is trying to do you into. Y'all ever hear of a partial birth abortion? Come halfway out. Not all the way out. That's not a deliverance. You can't have one foot in the church, one foot in the world, and say you delivered. Don't work like that. You either all in or you all out. And you all out if you're trying to, if you're trying to uh, 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 teeter talk. <laughs> You can't boogaloo in the joy and come in the church and, 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 and praise and worship God. You ain't doing that. You may have the shout down. You may have the, the, the vocals down. But you're only fooling yourself. You follow me? You with me? Don't work like that. Some people, while I'm on that subject, <laughs> some people are always in a constant state of repentance and never get delivered. So their constant state of repentance isn't really repentance. That's guilt. So they're in a constant state of guilt because the person truly repents, they change in turn. Never to go back. If you keep doing the same thing, the same uh, 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 habitually, it's not repentance. It's guilt. Y'all with me? I feel the Bible class turning. <laughs> Preparation also means this gospel, it prepares you to do the will of God. When you study the life of Jesus and that word becomes a part of your DNA, it gets in you, it prepares you to do God's will. When you read about the stories of Jesus and the faith of Jesus, not only that, Holy Ghost is helping me. When you read and, and study even those who Jesus affected, he affected their faith. When, 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 there was a sick man who had the palsy. Jesus was in the house teaching. The house was too compacted with people. They went up on the roof, tore the roof off, lowered the man down, huh? So that, so that Jesus could heal him. Look at their faith. Their faith made them tear up some stuff. Tear, get rid of some obstacles that was in the way. Huh? So that they can get to Jesus. You, when, you, when you become so enamored about the faith that is in Jesus, you get rid of some stuff. You tear up some stuff. You move some stuff. You tear the roof off some stuff. Just so you can get to Jesus. So that Jesus can perform what he's anointed to do. The woman with the issue of blood, 
She was operating by faith. By right, she should have been stoned for being in the mix in her condition. But her faith covered her. Her faith gave her, gave her the ability to say, if I but touch the hem of his garment, the law kept her down, but her faith freed her. The laws of man will keep you down, but your faith in Jesus, it'll free you. It'll free you to do the impossible. Amen. It'll free you to believe the impossible. Amen. Yes, Lord. You'll do some stuff that you've never done before. That man didn't think that, well, I'm tearing up this guy's house, I'm gonna go to jail. They weren't thinking that way. Huh? Well, if I'm tearing up this man, how's he gonna shoot me? It wasn't thing that way. He said, we got to see Jesus by any means possible. You can't be allowing fear to interfere with your walk with the Lord. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Huh? That's, that's what this gospel will prepare you. When you read and study the life of Jesus, it'll prepare you for that. For whatever situation you come up against. You follow me? That's why Paul said, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, being prepared because you're standing upon a solid foundation. You gotta know what you got is real. Huh? You gotta know what you got is sure. Huh? This thing is sure. This thing, this thing is real. You gotta, you gotta have a mindset, say I'm gonna sell out. I'm going to sell out to him. You sold out. Paul said he was persuaded. Are you persuaded? Your lifestyle shows whether or not you're persuaded. How you live shows whether or not you're persuaded. Amen? Notice then. Let's go over then to, uh, I only got six more minutes. I gotta make it count. Second Corinthians chapter number five. Verse 18. Now notice. The Bible says all things. Second Corinthians 5, verse 18. It says, all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and have given us the ministry of reconciliation. That word reconcile, y'all need to know what that means. When you get into Christ, all the enmity and hatred that God had for you before you came to him is gone. It's forgiven. The debt has been paid. That's what the gospel is about. The debt has been paid. Now you may say, Pastor, why you bring that up? Because the enemy will tell you God don't love you. God hates you. God is against you. <laughs> But the scriptures tell you, that's why you got to know what truth is. That, that when you are a believer, trusting in God, the, the, uh, uh, you've been reconciled. The debt has been paid. And not only has the debt has been paid, you have been forgiven. I'm forgiven. Has the enemy ever brought up your past? <laughs> Trying to make you dwell on your past? He said, I've been forgiven. Get thee behind me, Satan. Notice then what he says. And all things of a God who have reconciled us to himself. I've been, we've been reconciled to God by Jesus Christ who have given us the ministry of reconciliation. That's what Jesus' ministry is about. Reconciliation. That's why he calls it the gospel of peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 
Notice then, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? New creature. Huh? All old things have what? And behold, all things have become what? And when you receive this gospel and put on Jesus, you become a new creation. Uh, all that old life, you took them garments off. But then you put on the garment of truth. You put on the garment of righteousness. You put on the garment of the gospel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Notice then. If therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All old things have passed away. Your old lifestyle has passed away. Don't go back and be a transgressor and go pick up that old lifestyle. You was a drug dealer and you broke now and you in the body of Christ. Don't, don't go back trying to sell drugs. Trust in the Lord. Do good. Use a, use a gambler. Huh? Before you came to the Lord, you was a gambler, you played the lottery. Now you in Jesus. You broke. Don't go back playing the lottery. You got to put into practice the, the strategies that God has established so that you can be blessed. I'm teaching right now. Don't go back to the world strategies. Pick up God's strategies. You with me? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Notice, verse 8, 19. He said, to win, God was where? In Christ, the world unto himself. He was Not imputing the trust unto them that he basically forgave us of our sins and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That word of reconciliation is Christ in you. The hope of glory. Notice, he said, verse 19, uh, verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. That's how you got to look at yourself. That's what this gospel establishes you as. An ambassador. You somebody. You a game changer. If I really preach that message over again, uh, I, would, I would add to it that because the Holy Ghost is in us, when we walk into a room, it makes us game changers. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We get that on another day. Notice, we then are ambassadors to for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's name, be reconciled to God, for He hath made Him to be what sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made what. That's what the gospel does for you. It makes you the righteousness of God by faith. And if you being the righteousness of God, live that way. Amen? Amen. Ain't no going back. Ain't no turning back. World ain't got nothing for me. World ain't got nothing for you. Huh? The reason why I came to Christ is because the world was treating me bad. Huh? Why you come to Christ? <laughs> Devil ain't treated you good. But in Christ, put on that gospel because you're going to have a fight. And the enemy wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you. But he can't do nothing with you as long as you're standing on the, that gospel. Amen? Amen? All right. We thank God for you. 
Amen. And we thank God for all of you that tuned in with us on today. And we praise God, give you an opportunity to give through Tidely. Uh, and we praise God that you'll tune in again with us all next week. In Jesus' name, amen.